let's continue with this example. Let's say we're asked to integrate x squared plus one over x cubed plus three x. Now here, again, you wanna think of it's a rational function. So is the derivative of the denominator present in the numerator? If so, we should be able to use our log rule. So let's find the derivative here off to the side. The derivative would be three x squared plus three which is not exactly what we have in the numerator, we're off by a factor of three. So here's a trick that sort of renders u substitution useless. What you can do is multiply anything, any quantity in mathematics by one and not change it. So I can say one times x squared plus one over x cubed plus three x with respect to x, these two are the same integrand. We're not changing anything by multiplying some quantity by one. Now what this allows you to do is change that one into something else that you need. We need a three in the numerator so that this derivative could be three x squared plus three. I don't have that, but I can introduce a constant. So what I can do is I can rewrite this as three over three times x squared plus one over x cubed plus three x with respect to x. Now the clever part here is we can keep the three in the numerator on the inside and take this one third out of the integrand by using the scalar multiple property. So I'm going to keep the three in the numerator, but the three in the denominator, I'm gonna push off to the outside. At this stage, we recognize that if you wanna distribute the three, you can. In fact, let's do it just for the sake of it. Three x squared plus three over x cubed plus 3x with respect to x. Now the derivative of the denominator is exactly what we have in the numerator. I don't have any constant fudging to do. So at this stage, we can recognize this would have come from taking the derivative of the ln of the absolute value of the denominator, which is x cubed plus 3x plus the almighty constant plus c. Let's do another one, maybe where the constants are not exactly the same, but they need to be. Let's say we have the integral of three minus x to the 10th with respect to x. Now, with if we were to find the derivative of say three minus x, the derivative of three minus x would be negative one. I don't have a negative one, but as before, I can introduce a negative one by rewriting the problem as one times three minus x, the quantity to the 10th with respect to x, and then rewriting this one as negative one over negative one. Or you could have also rewritten as negative one times negative one, same thing. Now the negative one in the numerator stays while the negative one in the denominator moves out, which is really just negative of the integral of negative three minus x to the 10th dx. Now eventually, if you get enough practice, you can go directly from there to there. I'm just writing it on the intermediate steps so that you see where that negative is coming from or where those negatives are coming from. Now at this stage, you recognize that is the derivative of some part of the problem present in the problem? Yes? Okay, so then this would have come from finding the derivative using chain rule of some function. Chain rule says this power would have been up by one. So it would have been 11. But think, when you, if you were to take the derivative of this, wouldn't you bring it down and then you would get negative 11 times three minus x to the 10th? But I don't want the negative 11 there. I, I just need the negative one because that's exactly what I have here. I don't need a negative 11. So what we also need to do is compensate by dividing by the 11. So that when we bring the 11 down, the 11 cancels out. And again, if you're not sure of, hey, is this really the answer? Let's find the derivative. Let's convince you that you really do get the same thing. So if we were to find the derivative of negative three minus x, the quantity to the 11th over 11 plus c, using chain rule, I would bring down the power and subtract one. So we would have negative 11 times three minus x 
to the 10th. I still have the 11 on the bottom, times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 3 minus x is negative 1. And then the derivative of c is just 0 because it's a constant. The negative times the negative is positive. 11 over 11 is gonzo. So you're left with 3 minus x to the 10th, which is exactly what our integrand was. So we have found a function, which when we differentiate, we get the integrand, and that's the definition of an antiderivative. You're coming up with a function that when you differentiate, gives you the integrand. Let's do another one where the constants don't exactly match up. Let's say we have to find the integral of 7x plus 9 inside a radical. So here, I can rewrite this first off right away as 7x plus 9 to the 1 half dx. The derivative of some part of the problem is not present in the problem, but we're off only by a constant. So if we were to take the derivative of 7x plus 9, we get 7. We're only off by 7, and I can introduce that. I can say that this is the same as 1 7th times the integral of 7 times 7x plus 9 raised to the 1 half dx. Now think about where the 7 came from and why this 1 7th is on the outside. Pause the video here, make sure you convince yourself of the steps that we've done before, of how I'm jumping directly from this integral to that. I'm basically giving the problem what it needs and then also multiplying by the inverse of that constant to make sure I'm not changing the problem itself. Now, what would we have differentiated? We would have differentiated, the 1 7th on the outside just comes along, we would have differentiated 7x plus 9 to the 3 halves because we dropped the power by 1. So if we multiply this down, we would just subtract 1 from the, from the power and we would get 1 half in the exponent. But we also have to divide by the 3 halves that we would be bringing down because I don't want that constant to be there. I don't have a 3 halves here in the integrand. Plus c. So pause the video here, convince yourself that this really is the derivative of the thing that we started with. Uh, the integrand is the derivative of this function. Uh, in the next video I'll talk about, or let's do one more. e to the 5x minus 7, let's say. Here, we know that the derivative of the exponent would just be 5, and that's what we're missing. We're missing a constant. So what I can do is multiply the outside by a fifth, put a 5 on the inside, and get e to the 5x minus 7. Now the derivative of part of the problem is exactly in the problem. So th what I would have differentiated would have been 5, oops, the 1 fifth on the outside, times e to the 5x minus 7 plus c. So again, pause the video convince yourself that we would have differentiated this to get that. Next video, I'll talk about where or how we could use, say, u substitution to solve all these questions. And you'll see that the process is decidedly longer.